I'm going to be talking about something really very important and that is the future of application development. Now what you see on the screen is how we currently build application right now. This is called the MVC layered architecture and it's easy to understand because you can easily build up an application uh, using this method. So if you look at this application I built, uh, you can find it in the description box, both the repository of this application in GitHub and also the procedure to build it, you can find it. This application is exactly based on the MVC layered architecture. You simply create all these files, the country.html, the country controller, the country service, the country repository and the country.java representing the model. So this is very easy. Once you have all these, uh, uh, all these files, you can hook them up together and you have a complete application. Now this is how, this is how the information flows. We have the presentation layer, which is where you have uh, the view, the HTML view, yes, where you sit on your browser and you go to the address bar and type something on your HTML uh, page. This is built with Timeleaf, that is what I use for this demo. Whatever you, you put into the browser and hit the enter key gets to the REST controller or the controller and from the controller it goes to the business service, from the business service it goes to the repository, from the repository it goes down to the model, the entities in the database, it pulls out this data and sends them upwards still across the same layers all the way to the HTML page that is your browser and you're able to see uh, this data presented to you. So this is easy, this is how we build the application but I'm going to tell you now that the way we are going to be building an application is in this way. In the next few years, this is how application development is going to look like. This is completely based on microservice. And the way it is is that it looks a bit complicated initially, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes very clear. I'm a researcher and I'm currently still researching on the, 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 the performance and the usefulness of the CQRS architecture. So this is called the CQRS architecture. CQRS stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. Now, I'm also going to take you through the application I built using this method. It's also a demo application, but I want you to learn the ingredient, the component that is used to build a CQRS-based architecture. And that I'm going to be doing based on a step-by-step -step tutorial I already created in my website. But before we do that, let me just take you through this architecture and let you know that it's actually not very difficult to understand. As I mentioned, if you are joining me for the first time, please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any updates. So hit the subscribe button. Let me know if you have any challenges following any of my lessons or you have something you want to learn, let me know because I'm there. I'm here to share my knowledge with everyone and that's a promise I made. So. Now we have the controller and the view. I've put them for simplicity in the same uh, layer. So this is where the user comes. He enters in the, uh, whatever enters in the address, address bar of the browser and hits the enter key. Now the UI interface here, I'm building it using Vardin so that you can actually learn something new. Vardin is also a UI management tool uh, that is incorporated into Spring Boot. So it's also something very easy we are going to be going into after now. Now, if you look at below the controller and view, you have two gateways. We have the command gateway and the query gateway. And that takes you to understanding the name of this approach that says command query responsibility segregation means that you're actually going to be separating the command and the query. What is a command? A command is like a post request or a put request, something that actually changes the state of the entity in the database. So if you are trying to create a new a new user or you're trying to change uh, some uh, username or some last name of a user in the, in, the, in the database, that is a command. It's going to actually change something. A query does not change anything. A query is simply you search for data and get back this series of data maybe in a tabular form. So this is a query and the idea behind it is that commands and queries are things that are disjoint. So in this case, if you are trying to make an online transaction, you actually need to do a lot of queries. You're actually going to view different products. You actually do several searches. And maybe at the end of the day, you only make one single command, which is checkout. 
to actually check out. So in this way, if you separate the two, it helps in scalability and provides the best performance also in terms of, of, of response time, in terms of um, robust nights. We are going to be talking about this a little later. So the f let's go to the command side because now we have two sides now. By default, if you implement CQRS, you have a microservice by default. So in this case, we have the command service or the command side, and we also have the query side. In the command side, when you make a command, maybe you click on checkout, you click on create new, it gets to the command gateway. From the command gateway, it gets to the command handler, all right? So this command handler specifies what is going to happen when a command is issued. So this command handler, in this case, it goes to the repository and writes something into the right DB. And take note that we have the DBs are now two two different DBs, but they are synchronized. So when you write something in the right DB, it's going to synchronize into the read DB. And how does it synchronize? Once the repository makes this change in the right DB, it's going to raise an event saying, oh, event listener, see, I've changed something. Please update your read models or your read DBs. And in this case, event handler is going to capture that change and update the read DB or the read model, okay? So that is the command side. Once com comes to the, to the command gateway, command handler to the repository, makes a change. Once that change completes, it raises an event. Take note that when the changes are caused, that is when the event is raised, not before. Now, when you want to do a query, you want to get a list of items, you want to search for a particular item by ID, it goes to the query gateway, to the query handler, and also to the repository and fetches this data from the repository, gets back to the query handler. Now, the view that the user sees is what we have as materialized views. So it contains data coming from the read DB. And that tells you that the read DB always have to be synchronized with the write DB because the user actually sees and reads from the read DB. So this is how CQRS architecture works. It's called CQRS and event sourcing. So event sourcing simply means events that are core in your application are actually logged, are actually captured. So at the end of the day, you can actually recreate the state of your application based on list of events or series of events that have been occurring in your application along the line. So this is how it works. We use two tools. We have the Axon framework, is actually the Axon platform made up of the Axon server and the Axon framework. And we also you have the Spring Boot. Axon integrates well with Spring Boot. So we are not going to have problem with this. So I hope this is a bit clear to you. This is the future of application development. If you are learning programming, if you are a developer, if you are a software engineer, you need to get a hang of the CQRS approach of building application. And let me just show you um, of course, this after now we are going to be starting this step by step. I'm going to be very clear explaining all the bits and pieces how to do the command hand handlers, the gateway, all the bits and pieces you go you are going to need to know for you to be able to understand and use CQRS and event sourcing with Axon framework. So uh, this is what we are going to be doing. This has been done in a seminar, but not clearly explained, not well articulated. Uh, I'm going to be telling you how this corresponds to this architecture I showed you. I'm going to be showing you all these components, the particular files and, and methods that handle each of these components you see in this architecture. And I'm also going to be showing you how to start up this server and see the performance of your CQRS and event system based application. And again, uh, if you want to play around with this to compare how the two works together, how the two uh, con compares and contrasts, you can actually get the link to this in my in description box and the procedure to do it as well. So open this page and keep it open because in the next part, we are actually going to dive right in to start building application using CQRS and event sourcing. I remain kind on the Tech Pro. I'm a researcher researching on different aspects of microservices and currently I'm working on CQRS and event sourcing to see how actually how the performance looks like and actually whether it's the complexity can be reduced and or also looking at scalability and other factors or criteria involved in measuring the application performance so i'd like you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on subscribe let me know if you have challenges and i remain kind on the tech pro and i'm always there for you